Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to get up and running with OpenCV on the BeagleBone Black. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Black yet, uh, there you go. Here's a link to it. It's 45 bucks, and it's a really good platform to get things started for your first trip into uh, embedded systems. Uh, OpenCV, definitely going to need a camera. The camera that I'm going to use is uh, the PlayStation Eye. And the reason why I'm using it is because it touts a 60 hertz frame rate at this resolution and a 120 hertz frame rate at that resolution. We'll see if it stacks up to that. I don't think it will, but uh, let's just give it a try anyways. Oh, it's 15 bucks at GameStop, so it's kind of worth it just to check it out. Uh, a lot of computer vision projects are using this camera. Uh, because of the reasons mentioned. OpenCV, if you're going to get into it, get used to this website. You're going to be here a lot. Uh, everything you would ever want to know about OpenCV is right here. Uh, lots of tutorials, that kind of thing. All right, so first thing we're going to do is plug in our Beagle board, get all that running. Plug in your camera into the Beagle board. Can't show you a picture. Maybe I'll edit that in later. First thing we're going to do is we're going to shell into the board. Go. We'll wait a little while for it to throw its bits around. There we go. All right. I'm going to go into the desktop where I have some code ready, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the big picture, and then we'll talk about code and all that stuff a little later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my little script here to build. And right now we're compiling directly on the Beagle board. No cross-compiling here. Which is probably a bad idea, actually. But it's uh, whatever. It's a first attempt, right? We just want to get OpenCV running. Uh, cool thing about the BeagleBone Black is that all the OpenCV libraries come pre-installed with everything, with the Linux that comes with it. And if, you, if you've ever tried to compile your own OpenCV, you know how frustrating it can be. And so it's definitely a lot easier just to, you know, try to figure out what the, uh, you know, the command... Oh, here he goes. All right, here we go. Here's some printf statements I, I needed to use to debug my own code. Don't worry about that. Um, uh, actually, my yeah, my script actually ran the code because I got tired of typing this in. Code red every time I try to debug. So here we go. I'm gonna run it now. Here we go. So what it did was capture an image and do some image processing on it. And what it did is uh, thresholded blue. So I'll explain that. In a bit. And what it did is uh, save some images for me. Um, so what I'm going to do now is grab those images from the Beagle board. And the way I'm going to do that is through SFTP. And we're going to log in to the Beagle board. Ooh, that's not right. So two root. All right. And what SFTP does is to allow us to. Uh, file transfer between devices. So right now it's my host in the Beagle board. Password's nothing. Hack it later. So right now on the Beagle bone, uh, we're going to change to the desktop where you can see that there are three images now, PNG images. And I'll show you those later. And on my local, my local host, we're going to uh, local change directory into desktop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get those images, but uh, get by itself only does one at a time. So what I'm going to do is do multiple get image. And instead of typing each of those in image HSV, image input, image result, I'm just going to do image star. It's going to grab all those for me. It's going to put them on my desktop. And so here is the 
input image that I received from the camera. There's my pretty face. And what I'm going to do now is show you the next step, which is HSV, which is changing the color space from red, green, blue, which is kind of what everyone is familiar with, to this color space, to then my color thresholding. So here, as you can see, the only thing showing up on this image is really this blue. So typically what you do from here is then you do some sort of blob detection or edge detection and then you can start picking out features of uh, the image. Okay, so now we're going to run through the code a little bit to get you familiar with it. Uh, I think first we'll start with the uh, build script. Sorry, cat build and there we go. So what you see here is basically there's a little script and it will run this compiling command. Uh, this you can just get off of opencv.org but uh, yeah and just my little, little my own little thing. And now we're going to actually look at the code Alright, first off are the two includes. Get familiar with them. Uh, typically, you would use something like high GUI uh, library class, but uh, since my BeagleBone is uh, doesn't have a you know graphic user interface, it's no point in using that. So, what we're going to do now is I'll explain the code a little bit. So first, start off with these threshold values. And what this is are, I'll explain them later, but basically these values will dictate which, which color will pop out in the image result down here. Um, so this last thing is a binary image. So what you see, a white means it's, a, it's blue, and a black means it's not blue. Um, so if you wanted green, you would change these values to something else. Or you know, if you wanted yellow, you'd change them to something else. Uh, double width and height. This is actually the resolution that the camera is going to take the picture of. And you can set this to what the Wikipedia said like 640 by something else, 320. Uh, you can set it. I find that it's slow either way. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. So, first things first, we're going to do a video capture capture of zero. And zero is the first uh, video capture device on your system. So if you accidentally plug, if you accidentally forget to plug in your camera or whatever, you might get, uh, you know, your like your webcam, your, web, your webcam or something. Just keep in mind. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually make the camera uh, set the frame resolution to width and height. And then, because I'm a bad programmer, I'm going to do it again. Double width equals capture get. And I'll explain why I'm doing this later. But mostly it's because I'm a bad programmer. Uh, if we fail to open the camera, then it doesn't work. Self-explanatory. Pretty standard. Uh, here's my printf statements, because I'm learning how to program. Uh, first things first, we're going to create a matrix. Image input and image HSV which stands for hue, saturation, and value. And that's just a different color space than RGB, or you know, blue, green, red, what everyone's familiar with. We're going to grab an image, and all you do for that is just capture, redirect, image input. And so now image input is our first uh, picture. It's our first frame. How exciting. Once we have our frame, then we're going to convert it into the HSV color space. And you do that with this powerful little function here from OpenCV. You get the input, get the output here, and then the transformation you want to do on it. So you can have BGR to grayscale to binary image. I think you can do it to you know HSV to HLS. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of different color spaces you can change change into. Uh, the next part 
once we have our color array uh, image HSV right here, right, we're going to actually split that up uh, because what's going to happen is the HSV color space is actually three channels. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to create another matrix called planes and we're going to split the image, which is currently three channels right here, this guy. And we're going to split them into each uh, element of this array. And the reason for this will be obvious later on. So now that we got that, now we can start doing like PhD stuff and like doing color thresholding and like a bunch of like image processing stuff. So first thing we're going to do is create these two more matrices. And we're going to do this another powerful OpenCV command of the threshold. And it's going to take the input planes, take the, and it's going to get, produce an output image threshold low. Okay. And it's going to take the first value of low, which above, and this, like low and high, these are the values to set your color, right? And then we're going to set it to uh, 255 which is you know a color between it's it's a, it's a value between 0 and 255 and basically it's going to produce this is going to produce an image that if it meets the threshold it's going to make it white or if it doesn't it's going to make it black and here we have the threshold binary just to call it that um, we're going to do this three times for each for the h for the S and for the V, because it's HSV color space. We're going to do it three times. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bitwise and all these uh, arrays together. And it's going to produce an output that will combine H, S, and V. Uh, and it would be a binary image. So, you know, if it showed up, shows up on H, a little bit of S, a little bit of V, and then it'll show up in the total picture. And maybe that's hard to explain or hard to visualize just because when someone's explaining it, but maybe you'll see it later. Um, so here we're actually just going to go ahead and create the final result, create another matrix called image result, size of the same width and height. And here's, uh, here's what I was talking about before, how I'm a bad programmer. I couldn't get it to... Um, like I couldn't just put in a number, like an integer value. I had to do that craziness up there. I had to like re reinitialize the value to something. I don't know, just, just that's what it is. And here we're going to uh, convert this result into an 8-bit unsigned character, one channel thing, because it's it's a it's a binary array image, so it's don't need that many bits per uh, you know pixel. And then scalar, because because it's a matrix, what we're going to do is this last parameter, scalar 255, it's going to initialize it so that it's all black. That's what 255 is. Um, and it's, since it's only one channel, then we only need to specify one parameter here. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to bitwise and all the results again. Um, and then we're going to uh, pop out the images. And when we do that, we get these. Right. Fantastic. Thanks.